Hi, I'm Omni Sunday. Wait, I don't even say that anymore. Lunatorn and Solrock are a mysterious Pokemon from the Hoenn region. In the Opelucid region, which is like Hisui from Legends Arceus, but based on Unova and in the future, these Pokemon can expand their potential. While Lunatone is an eerie and intimidating Pokemon on its own, it becomes especially aggressive in the midst of a solar eclipse. Team Plasma discovered a Pokemon that causes solar eclipses by changing the direction of the moon so it stays in front of the sun for longer than would be natural. When Lunatone came face to face with this Pokemon, it evolved. It may have even killed the powerful eclipse causing Pokemon, but Team Plasma was able to fight it off. For its design, I got the owl part from how owls prey on bats. Why is that important? Well, maybe the eclipse causing Pokemon is based on a bat. Anyway, owls have a really cool intimidation tactic where they flare their wings out in a way with their head down that makes them look way bigger than they actually are. The tactic is so good that it usually works on people too. The pose the Pokemon is doing is based on that, though the thumbnail pose of it is looking normal. So when Lunatone is exposed to the power of the moon Pokemon, it evolves into Strigiluna. Strigiluna is a rock psychic type Pokemon with a signature ability called Moon's Call. This ability grants Strigiluna immunity to ground, dark, and ghost type attacks. It also has a signature psychic type attack called Moongeist Vanquish that's always super effective against Ghost. It also learns some extra moves like Hurricane and Surf. An odd coincidence about Strigiluna is its weight. It's an extremely dense Pokemon and its weight in grams happens to match the distance from the Earth to the Moon in kilometers. When Strigiluna strikes its intimidating pose, its special stats increase and its senses are sharpened. The gem in the middle of its tail absorbs moonlight and stores it as energy. Its bright red eyes can strike fear into the bravest of opponents. Competitively though, it's not that scary. Rock Psychic is a notably dog water typing, though Strigiluna's incredible ability helps with that a lot. Its weaknesses are halved, going from a pitiful 7 to a decent 4. On top of that, those removed weaknesses are now immunities. It's immune to ghost type moves, which helps against many of the silly wacky sweepers in the OU tier, as well as immunities to ground and dark type moves like the omnipresent knockoff and earthquake. Factor in its fire resistance, and you have a Pokemon capable of walling many notable attackers. Even Landorus is powerless against Strigiluna. However, Strigiluna is not without shortcomings. The most glaring weakness is its subpar defense. Even with its good HP, 75 base defense is just not good enough in today's economy. Its immunities help, but it'll take big damage from any non-resisted physical attack, like a close combat from Great Tusk, or even a liquidation from Don Dozo. Also, its offense is just not that good. Nasty Plot and Calm Mind help, but a good player could work around that relatively easily with Strigiluna's subpar speed. Overall, Strigiluna is probably definitely OU material, and would be pretty good there, probably maybe. But it's no Great Tusk or Lando T. While Solrock is an imposing and uncanny Pokemon on its own, it becomes especially aggressive during severe temperature fluctuations. Team Plasma has discovered a Pokemon that causes such fluctuations, absorbing and releasing energy with freakish absorbing and releasing energy with freakish efficiency. When Solrock came face to face with this Pokemon, it evolved. It may have even killed the powerful temperature changing Pokemon, but Team Plasma was able to fight it off. For its design, I took the giraffe part from how adult giraffes can usually beat the socks off lions in the wild. Also, its head atop its tall neck, kinda, sorta, maybe, looks like the sun in the sky. Okay, that's a stretch. This Pokemon can hide the fiery parts like its neck and limbs inside its rocky exoskeleton to take a defensive posture and look like a weird pile of rocks. Its name comes from Hirafa, which just means giraffe. So when Solrock is exposed to the power of the sun Pokemon, it evolves into Solrafa. Solrafa is a rock psychic type Pokemon with the ability Sun's Devour. This ability grants Solrafa immunity to ground, dark, and steel type attacks. It also has a signature psychic type attack called Sun Steel Annihilation that is super effective against all steel types regardless of their secondary typing. It learns great moves that Solrock doesn't, such as close combat, agility, and bulk up. This Pokemon demands respect with its striking appearance and intimidating eyes. It looks down upon others with an air of disregard, and only cares to fight a Pokemon of similar stature. 
It takes defensive posture when sleeping, but other than that, it will usually attack anything that gets close. When the blistering oblucid sun is high in the sky, Solrafa is at its most aggressive. In competitive, this might be true, with its solar blade and fire coverage, and the sun certainly helps with its water weakness, but it's really not all that useful in the grand scheme of things. Offensive Sol Rafa would probably run Sword Stance and maybe Agility with Close Combat and one or two of its stabs. If you really wanted to run it in Sun, you might replace some of the attacks with Flare Blitz or even Solar Blade if you're bold. A much better set, however, would be the defensive build. Stealth Rock, Will Wisp, Morning Sun, and an Attack would be the best set on it for sure. Basically, a version of the Soul Rock set that was built to counter Primal Groudon. So Rafa would be able to do that and a whole lot more, with its much better stats and ability. However, it's still pretty weak to lots of special attackers like Goldengo Shadow Ball and Superior's Leaf Storm. So Rafa would probably still be OU though, and it might even compete with Strigiluna as a defensive rock psychic type. The only difference would be if you want a ghost immunity with special defense, or a steel immunity with physical defense. And that's about it for this video. Check out my Patreon, where you can subscribe for a dollar a month to support me and get your name at the end of my videos. I've also got some silly bonus content there if you're interested. Thanks Captain Kobop, Art of Dying, and new subscriber Mr. Kale. In my next video, I'll fuse legendary Pokemon with regular ones. It'll be fun. Hope to see you then, and thanks for watching! So you might have noticed that this video came out late. Um, funny story about that. Um, I did some of the script writing, um, like last month, but every, like most of the script and pretty much every piece of art that you've seen in this video, every frame, um, I drew it today, <laughs> like the day that this video was coming out, um, because I was doing some other stuff, um, and I've been sick. Not like seriously sick, but you might notice my voice is a little stuffy. Um, but yeah, I'm sorry that this video came out a little late. Um, still the right day at least. Um, but yeah, it was worth it. <laughs> um, that's all I got for now though. Um, but hopefully next week I'll be back to a regular schedule. Thanks for watching.